of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. My name is Lynn and this is Bucket List Homestead. And I know I have some new subscribers because thanks to all of you, I reached another milestone yesterday, 1,700 subscribers. Just a week ago, I was saying I just reached 1,600. I wish I could hug each and every one of you and I wish I had better words than these. Great big thank you, but that's all I can <laughs> give you. I am so thankful and so grateful for all of you who have subscribed. Um, I had a goal of reaching 1600 by the end of August, which I did, <laughs> and I have a secondary goal, excuse me, secondary goal of reaching 2,000 subscribers by December 31st of this year, and I believe I'm going to do it. I really am believing now that I might just reach 2,000, so again, I'm grateful, thankful, I feel blessed, thank you so much. So... Today's challenge. Um, oh, and yes, thank you all for your kind words yesterday. I definitely was feeling very, um, not defeated, but very tired and I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Part of that is, is because my house is a disaster, which is typical this time of year. But I find that as the years go by, I can handle it shorter periods of time than I used to be able to. I used to be able to just, okay, it's a mess until like at least September. We're going to have to do that. We'll just have to deal with it. And I'm finding as I'm getting older, I have less patience for it being a mess and disorganized. So that is part of my problem. So I'm getting this video done early today so I can give my house some love. That being said, we're also dealing with our lily girl, our dachshund, who got spayed yesterday, and she's acting like nothing happened today, which is not a good thing. <laughs> so um, we'll see how much she lets me get done. I'm hoping I can at least get this video done um, before I have to sit down with her again to keep her calm. So today I'm excited because we're doing something with tomatoes. So when I was cleaning out my freezers in participation of harvest season and stocking up, I found a bag of frozen tomatoes. <laughs> I really thought I got all of them when I found them in January, some of the ones I had left, but I missed one. But that's okay, because my tomatoes are maybe a week away. I don't know, it might be September before I'm doing anything with tomatoes. So I'm gonna make some tomato soup. And I've made the tomato soup before, and it was delicious, but now I want to can it so we have some. Um, Grace is actually eating tomato soup now with her lunch or whatever, which she never used to. Um, I love to, um, tomato soup with grilled cheese sandwich in the winter. It's like the best lunch or supper ever. <laughs> and I also use tomato soup in different like recipes, goulash, things like that. And the ones that you get in the store, a lot of them are full of corn syrup and sugars. I mean, a can of Campbell's tomato soup has more sugar than a candy bar. Like, it's crazy. That being said, I am adding some sugar to this recipe, but it's more to take away the acidity of the tomatoes and just make it a little bit sweetness because if you're used to the store-bought tomato soup, you're not gonna like homemade tomato soup without a little bit of sugar. So I'm gonna be using some organic cane sugar. So earlier, I took them and I, I, I took all the tomatoes and run them, ran them under hot water and all the skins just slip off so easily. I can't eat the skins. David and I can't eat the skins. They cause insane acid reflux. Um, I just, it was bad uh, when we realized what was going on. The pain was immense. So I don't eat the skins. So we rent, get them all off. And then as you see here, I just threw them in a casserole dish. Uh, I sprayed my pan a little bit and I roasted them for about 40 minutes on 350 degrees. And now we're at the part where we're ready <laughs> to start the rest of the soup. So they have come out and I will drain off a lot of this liquid before we put them in the pot. And I have my big stock pot here. I'm just gonna set these over here for now. And in here I have probably a good tablespoon of butter that we're going to get melting and for this recipe you are going to need I'm using only half a cup 
of onions because I have maybe three pounds of tomatoes. So this isn't the recipe. Uh, most recipes you have like seven to 10 pounds. So yeah, so I got about half a cup of onion. I've cut it up, but you don't have to cut it up too fine because we're going to be using the immersion blender to blend all this. So that saves time. I have about three cloves of garlic here. You can put as much or as little garlic as you want and that's all minced. I have some oregano that is from my garden that has been drying and some basil from my garden that's been drying and the Tomatoes and the garlic are all from my garden. So the onion and the, you're going to need salt and obviously some cane sugar. Those aren't from my garden, but a lot of this is. So <laughs> still canning my harvest. So in here, we're going to get this butter melting. And then we're going to add the onions and cook them for a few minutes. And then add the garlic and then we're going to add basically everything else. So we'll get this butter melting and then we'll add the onions. I had to switch burners because I forgot I had to get my canner going. <laughs> so I have my canner now going on the other burner and our butter is all melted. So we want to cook these till they're translucent. So that's about as brown as I want my um, onions. You can certainly let them go longer if you want. Now I'm going to add my garlic. And I also have four pint jars warming up in the oven. I'm honestly not sure how many I'm going to need. I'm starting with four and we'll see if I get more than that. <laughs> okay, so that's just going to cook until you smell the garlic. Make sure we get it all. All right. I also forgot you're going to need lemon juice too for this recipe, but we add that at the end. Okay. You can almost smell the garlic. Okay. And now we're gonna add the tomatoes. And I've already drained off a lot of the juice. Just one second. That one was getting into something she shouldn't have. Okay, so I've drained off a lot of the liquid, but I'm gonna save a little bit. It's all gonna evaporate anyway. <laughs> so in go the tomatoes. And yeah, I'll be lucky if I get four. <laughs> we're gonna let this cook for quite a bit until it gets to the thickness you want. We're not going for paste, it is soup, but I am gonna definitely let some of that water evaporate. And then we'll add our salt, oregano, and basil at the end. Okay, I have a lot of tomato sauce from last year, and it's just tomato sauce. I didn't add anything to it so I could keep it neutral. I'm actually gonna add it to this <laughs> to stretch this a little bit further. There we go. I mean, some recipes call for tomato paste anyway, so there. That might actually get me a few more, <laughs> a few jars of tomato soup. So we're definitely gonna let this cook down a little bit longer. So I just have it on very low and I'm actually managed to get a few things done <laughs> while that simmers. So fingers crossed and we will taste it here in a minute. I still haven't added the salt or the spices yet, the herbs. I kind of like to do that near the end, but uh, in the sugar. Actually, I need to add the sugar right now. So I'm just going to add a teaspoon of sugar for now, and then I'll taste it after it's cooked for a few minutes, and we'll see if I think it needs any more. But I think this small amount, one might just do it. some salt just until I taste it and see if it needs more I'm gonna immersion blend all these uh, spices and things that I just 
that I just added to it because I, I want mine very smooth. And if you don't have an immersion blender, you can do all this in a blender. I'm gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna taste it and see if it needs anything else. It's been 20 minutes and we are gonna test this. I have to tell you, it smells amazing. So, when I would serve this, I'm gonna look up here. When I would serve this, I would serve it with some cream and top it with some Parmesan cheese. Though those are both dairy things and they're not recommended for can canning, so I won't can with them, but that's how I would serve it. But we're just gonna try it like this. Wow. <laughs> So I added about another half a teaspoon, not quite. It wasn't quite a full half a teaspoon of sugar and it's perfect. Mmm, oh, that is so good. Okay, time to can it up. Before I can the tomato soup, I wanted to give you an update. I don't know if you all remember, but it's all sticky in there. <laughs> that watermelon that I dehydrated and I didn't make it very thin because I wanted to keep it more chewy. Well, it took a long time. A long time. I'll never do it again. And we lost the power a couple of different days. So I lost some time there. So that's why. But I will never. It, it The dehydrator was running a long time just for the watermelon. So I didn't care for that. But I will tell you. So here it is. And I definitely put it in here with an oxygen absorber. We're going to have to eat this up like fast. <laughs> um, I don't think the kids are going to eat it. Because they could be able to eat it. Because it's very sticky and they both have braces, but it's delicious. I will say that. It is like watermelon gummy. It's what it reminds me of. So, did it work? Yes and no. It tastes good, and it's not dehydrated to the point of powder, but it took, I mean, I maybe if I kept dehydrating it, it would get that way, but I wanted it chewy, but it still took a long time to get to chewy, so um, I have ate a few. It's really good. So, I won't do it again, <laughs> but it's still good. Okay, so now we are going to can up the soup. for a little bit and I just realized I forgot to put a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice in both bottle jars it's only two jars but hey it's two more than I had on the shelf before um, I know tomatoes are really acidic but they're saying that nowadays tomatoes aren't as acidic as they used to be so they do recommend you add some lemon juice I'll just have to eat these really fast I guess just to make sure um, I've certainly canned tomatoes before without adding lemon juice but do as I say, not as I do. So yeah, you should have added a teaspoon of lemon juice to each one of those jars. Here we go. Only two pint jars of tomato soup, but like I said before, that is two more than what I had on my shelf before. I'll definitely be making a big batch of this to have on the shelf 
more jars on the shelf going forward once my tomatoes decide to cooperate. So just the one thing we're doing today because I am going to give some love to the rest of the house. We'll see you back here tomorrow for day 17.